My name is Houston, and I'm uh, just putting this video together so that we can kind of walk over some tips and tricks when using the Let's Paint products, just so you can get the most out of it. So once you download the pack, this is what you're going to see. There's actually two sets. This is the photography set. These are I took photos of these. And then the other set is scans, um, and they have their advantages and disadvantages. So go ahead and grab a brush stroke. I like this one. Um, and I'm going to just quickly walk you through a couple different things. We'll start off with uh, different ways of coloring these if the color is not quite right. Um, the first method that I'll show you, which is the weakest method, is um, using the hue saturation slider. Now, if you just want to just barely change the color, then this method works all right. You can kind of just shift it uh, just a little bit each way, and it still kind of looks natural. But if you go too far, it starts to look uh, a little weird. And so, um, wouldn't recommend this if you want to make drastic changes, but if you just want it to be slight, it can, it can usually work all, all right. The second and uh, more powerful method is to use the camera raw filter. So once you have your file, your, your layer selected, go ahead and select camera raw filter. And uh, you can play with temperature and tint and contrast and, and play with the shadows and everything. And you can, you can kind of refine it here. You can also mess with the hue, saturation, lightness sliders. That these are a little bit more powerful um, and are great for sliding in a really natural and organic way these colors um, to their neighbors and, and to getting a really natural effect. The one that I like the most is camera calibration um, and messing with the red, green, and blue primaries. And um, you can get really, really smooth and natural changes in the color using this. So let's go ahead and try this. I kind of like shifting this to a little bit more of a stronger orange. Kind of like that. I think that that's pretty nice. I'm going to press OK. And uh, so there you have it. So it used to be red, and now it's this really nice orange. Um, the next step that I'm going to show you, uh, and this is still for coloring, is you can color this manually. So if you go ahead and create a new layer, set it to be a clipping mask. I'm going to go ahead and grab a nice bright yellow, and I already have that red in there. I'm just going to grab a big soft brush, and uh, I'm just going to start painting. Uh, also, don't forget to set your layer mode to color, and I have the opacity at 35%, so not too strong. And I'm just going to kind of loosely paint in some of, these, some of this color in here. And I can just get a really nice gradient doing this. And, and you got to keep it, you can't go too crazy with it, you need to keep it within a, a range that's similar to your base brush stroke. But you can see that's pretty nice and it, it feels very natural. So the next step that I'm going to show you is how to distort your brushes in a natural way so that they feel real. And the, to use that, you're going to select your brush stroke and select Puppet Warp under Edit. Uh, I'm going to set three stroke, or three points right now. I'm going to grab the middle point and I'm going to kind of just angle them just like this. I'm going to start to give it a curve. And I'm going to add two more points in between those. And that's going to help it feel much, like a much smoother curve. And I'm just going to continue to adjust them until I kind of get it to, to what I feel like is, is best. Um, and this is, again, more experimentation, how you want to mess with these for your clip and how, how you want it to fit for your project is going to be totally different from what I'm wanting to do here. But to give your brush strokes a nice curve, you know, any of the straight brushes, this will work great for. So that'll do, and that works, looks great. And uh, yeah, so the next thing that we're going to show is how to do shadows. Now, there's lots of great tutorials on how to do various types of soft, 3D looking shadows. I'm just going to show you one here that I like and I use occasionally. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer and and set a color overlay to a dark color. It could be dark blue, it could be black, whatever you like. I'm going to turn these off so that we can see what's happening here. I'm going to name it Shadow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my Blur Gallery, and I'm going to choose Tilt Shift. I'm going to change the angle, and I'm going to move it over to the far right, in this case. And I'm going to actually pass it so it's not in any of the safe zone. Um, everything's being affected. And I'm just going to change all the parameters so that it is a kind of a nice fade off.
I'm just going to pull it over a little bit farther so that everything's being affected. And then I'm just going to increase the blur until I get something that I feel like is the amount that I'm looking for. You can play with the distortion to get whatever you feel is best. And, and that looks all right, so I'm going to press OK. I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity way down. Uh, anywhere 5 to 20, 25 usually, and turn my layers back on. And then you can go back to your shadow layer, make sure that's selected, and go ahead and Command T or uh, go to Edit and Transform. And I'm going to drag it while holding Option on a Mac and uh, pull that straight down, shear it down. And uh, I can just kind of get this nice, like, uh, like the background is falling down from the brush stroke. Gives it a nice 3D approach. And something I like to do when I'm using this is to go ahead and create a mask on that shadow layer and then use a gradient fill um, to just kind of fade it off just a little bit. So I'm just using a black and white gradient. You can see over in the icon to just kind of fade it off just a little bit more since a shadow wouldn't be as strong since it's a little bit farther away from the light. So that looks great. So those are three techniques that you can use to really take these brush strokes to the next level and to uh, have a lot of fun um, when you're making things with the brush strokes. Uh, again, stay tuned for updates at, at my website at Creative Market. Um, I'm planning a couple of major updates, especially for the brush pack and, and some of the other products I have. And so please check those out. Um, one of the things that I forgot to mention that I wanted to bring in is uh, so whenever I'm using the brush strokes, uh, sometimes I'll create these overlay layers, and you can see I just have a, a radial gradient from black from white to black, and I just set it to overlay on about forty to fifty percent opacity, and then I set it as a clipping layer only on my paint brush stroke layers. Um, it just kind of gives it a nice effect. It kind of unifies all of the lighting. Uh, gives it all a consistent look. And then here you can see uh, my drop shadow. Sometimes I do just an overall drop shadow for everything to give it that 3D appearance. You can see it here with off. And now it's on. And uh, again, just multiply a very dark color. I'm using a dark blue. Opacity around 20, 25 percent. I'm using 27. And then distance way up. Size way up. And then I am using a lot of noise. I have 34% noise. And that kind of gives an effect that I really like. Do want to give a shout out to Paul Nobert, um, the king of this technique, and, and uh, just a huge amount of appreciation and inspiration from this guy. He is a master of this. And um, just check out his stuff. He is amazing. Also, I am using subtle patterns for some of my backgrounds. And I just want to thank them for the resources that they give designers, as well as Pixedon. Uh, I use some of their mockups for um, showing off my paint strokes. Again, guys, Fox and Bear website is creativemarket.com slash we have one problem. And please check out my other products. Um, I work really hard and, and I love being able to do this. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>